Have you ever wondered how fast a bullet leaves a gun? In this experiment, we will be using the ballistic pendulum to determine the velocity of a ball or projectile. We will use two different methods, arrive at two values for the velocity, and compare our results. First, let me explain how this apparatus works. The projectile is launched by means of a spring, which is caught by this mechanism. There is an interior catch, which is released when this lever is pressed, as so. The advantage of this is that it ensures that the velocity of the projectile is fairly consistent and is only slightly influenced by the amount of force applied to the release catch. For the first method, the projectile is launched and collides with the pendulum. As you can see, the pendulum arm is pinned here. This restricts its motion, allowing it only to rotate upward. On the bottom of the pendulum cup is a ratcheting mechanism. This prevents it from sliding back down after it's reached its apex. We will measure the height that the pendulum and the projectile raise. And from that height alone, we will be able to determine the velocity of the projectile. Just from the height, that the pendulum and projectile raise, we will be able to determine the velocity of the projectile. At this point, you are likely wondering how we can calculate the velocity just for measuring the height that the pendulum and projectile travel. To accomplish this, we must use two conservation laws of physics. We will use the conservation of momentum and the conservation of energy. The first law of physics that we will use is the law of conservation of momentum. This law states that in collisions, momentum is conserved. What is momentum? Momentum has the symbol P and is mathematically defined as mass times velocity. This is not a difficult concept to understand intuitively. We can think of momentum as how hard an object is to stop. How will we use the law of conservation of momentum in our experiment? When we launch the projectile, it immediately collides with the pendulum arm and becomes lodged inside. So we have a collision here, and we will use the law in the following way. The momentum of the projectile before collision is mv. I will express the mass of the projectile as small m, and I will express the projectile's initial velocity, which by the way is the quantity we are after, as small v. The projectile collides with the pendulum. I will express the pendulum's momentum using a capital M and a capital V since it is physically larger. After collision, we have the projectile and pendulum moving together as one system. Therefore, its mass can be expressed as little m plus big M. And I will express the velocity of the projectile and pendulum after collision as V combined or V subscript C. So we have little m times little v plus big M times big V equals quantity M plus M times V subscript C as our expression for conservation of momentum. Let's examine this equation as applied to our situation. We've determined that the pendulum is colliding with the projectile. At the moment of impact, the pendulum's velocity is zero. Therefore, its momentum is zero. So I can eliminate this term from our equation. And I have little m times little v equals m plus m quantity times v subscript c. Since we are solving for little v, I will divide both sides of our equation by m and arrive at v equals quantity m plus m divided by little m times v subscript c. Now we are halfway there, but with one equation and two unknowns, we are still unable to solve for little v. However, if we could solve for v subscript c, we can determine the velocity of the projectile. We will use conservation of energy to solve for v subscript c. What is energy? There are several different types of energy. However, in this experiment, we will be using kinetic energy and potential energy. Let's start with kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy due to motion and is mathematically defined as one-half times the mass times the velocity squared. Potential energy is stored energy, 
And in our case, it is energy stored due to the force of gravity. It is mathematically defined as mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the difference in height. In our experiment, the kinetic energy of the system will translate into potential energy as the system rises against the force of gravity. So our general equation is one half times mass times velocity squared equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the difference in height or delta H. Let us express this equation for our particular circumstances. We are referring to the kinetic and the potential energy of the pendulum with the projectile after collision. Therefore, the mass in consideration will be the combined masses, little m plus big M. And the velocity in consideration will be the VC, which is the velocity of the pendulum and the projectile after collision. Therefore, our equation becomes kinetic energy equals potential energy, or one half quantity m plus m times v subscript c squared equals quantity m plus m times the acceleration due to gravity, or g, times delta h. We can measure the masses, we know the value for g, and the delta h in this equation is the height that the pendulum rises. Now we will do some algebraic manipulation and solve for v subscript c. As you can see, we have m plus m quantity on both sides. I can cancel these out. I will now multiply both sides by 2. This will cancel the 1 half here. And I will arrive at v subscript c squared equals g delta h times 2. Taking the square root of both sides, I will have V subscript C equals the square root of G delta H times 2. Returning to our equation for conservation of momentum, we can substitute the square root of G delta H times 2 for V subscript C and solve for V. As you can see in this equation, all we need to measure in order to determine the velocity of the projectile is the height increase, delta H, of the pendulum and projectile. Okay, now we will plug in our value for V subscript C back into our original equation. We had velocity of the projectile equals quantity M plus big M over little m times V subscript C. I have from our second equation, V subscript C equals square root of G delta H times 2. Plugging this value into here, we arrive at V equals M plus big M quantity over M times the square root of G delta H times 2. So now, as you can see in this experiment, all we need to calculate the velocity of the projectile is the height increase, delta H. Have fun.